All right, so uh, I'm, I'm Guillaume Durand from uh, the uh, National Research Council Canada. I'm, I'm presenting today works that uh, we have done uh, with uh, uh, colleagues from NRC and my good fellow from the University of Moncton. Uh, just would like to warn everybody in the in the in the room that uh, what we'll be be talking about today is about um, engineering curriculums. So it's uh, it's um, college college uh, level actually uh, things, and so it's it's what it does not apply at all uh, uh, on Cat World and uh, and things like that. So what we're trying to achieve, we want to, uh, to help the design and the refining of uh, competency-based curriculum. So uh, in uh, engineering education, um, there's a, a huge work towards accreditation. So uh, being able actually to, uh, to show, provide evidences of the things that has been learned uh, is key in order actually to uh, keep being accredited, accredited anyway. So, uh, the, uh, the uh, accreditation uh, is uh, performed every uh, four to five years, and uh, all actually the, the, the program is audited. So that's uh, that's uh, a big problem. Um, what we we, we uh, developed so far is uh, software functionalities, and uh, we named him, we named it the uh, Q matrix anal analyzer, Q matrix to refer actually to uh, the Q matrix concept back, back uh, in time to the role space. Uh, uh, in the, in the 80s, so it's, it's definitely a, 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 the representation of a competent framework, and we'll see uh, very quickly what it looks like uh, in uh, an engineering faculty. So what, what this tool uh, will do, basically, it will uh, provide visual information on uh, the way competency are acquired um, during the, the curriculum, and it will also provide guidance during the, uh, the um, creation of the uh, competency framework uh, that is uh, supporting uh, learning. And, and basically what we would like uh, actually to be able to, to do is to uh, detect uh, design flows and be able actually to, to, uh, to, uh, to uh, provide solutions. So it's a, it's a pretty ambitious actually uh, uh, objective at first. So if, if we uh, look at um, a basic uh, use case, so imagine that uh, you are uh, an engineering uh, professor and uh, you have actually to show that during your, uh, your course uh, some uh, uh, competencies that are uh, required from your um, department are effectively uh, learned. And uh, you will build your course, you will uh, define actually in which course uh, you will have a search and search, uh, which test, sorry, you will have a search and search competency and create uh, what I was referring before as a, a Q matrix, which is basically, as you can see, the list of competencies, the list of tests, and uh, and uh, dots representing uh, uh, actually where, uh, uh, in, in which actually uh, course uh, the competency is evaluated. So the uh, Q matrix analyzer is, uh, is able actually, uh, thanks to, uh, to um, to uh, production rules to find actually uh, major flows. Uh, naturally, not all of them, but, but some of them. And uh, after that, uh, the course uh, will, uh, will occur and uh, the, the teacher, the professor will get actually uh, results and the uh, matrix analyzer will look at the uh, um, results obtained and will be able to, uh, to say whether or not there's issues uh, in order to, uh, to read um, to read what happened. And as, uh, as a reading, what we want actually to uh, provide actually the professor with is uh, a set on, of uh, learning curves and uh, their interpretation. So learning curves, uh, and, and what I'm displaying here is more, uh, more error curves, uh, is basically actually uh, information related to uh, the difficulty of each skill and the, the velocity at which actually the skill uh, is learned during a, a course or uh, during a, a curriculum in, a, in our case. So uh, if you have, uh, for example, uh, a steep curve, uh, you will infer that uh, the learning uh, rate is, uh, is pretty fast. And if you will uh, 
uh, have a flat uh, curve, uh, you will infer that there's no learning. And the higher actually the curve is uh, in the graph, the more difficult the skill is. So uh, for instance, uh, in, in uh, what we are seeing in the screen, the lower end curves would, uh, would uh, be actually skills that could have been already mastered uh, prior uh, starting the course. So uh, uh, the, the professor will know that maybe it's, it's not uh, relevant actually to keep uh, teaching uh, this, uh, this competence. So the technology behind is, uh, as I was uh, saying before, a set of production rules that are mainly based on our experience of, uh, of uh, using a, a cognitive model called the additive factor model. Uh, the additive factor model is uh, what you will find in the um, excellent and incredible uh, PSRC data shop platform, which is, uh, um, which is for me actually the uh, ultimate uh, tool for competencies uh, based, based uh, learning. And, and, and the, 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 the role of the production rules is to uh, prepare the competency framework in order actually to, uh, to uh, provide uh, a favorable uh, environment to run uh, the model and to exploit it. So uh, how does it work uh, in real life? So in real life, uh, I was saying, um, we uh, have actually um, something called the Canadian Engineering Accreditation, Accreditation Board, reviewing actually uh, the engineering program every four to five years, uh, and uh, looking for the uh, evidences of uh, 12, 12 attributes mastered at the end of uh, each curriculum but also actually evidences that the faculty is doing all uh, its best to uh, a continuous improvement of the curriculum. So it's a lot of work. Uh, usually, uh, and, and in our case, it's, uh, it's uh, our friend Yassine who, is, uh, uh, who, who has actually a, a lower uh, assignment in courses uh, during the year before actually the evaluation. Uh, in order to prepare that, uh, they, they have actually uh, to go through uh, all the uh, transcripts, uh, the results to uh, display curves, and it's, uh, it's, it's, it's something actually in terms of work. So the way they do that uh, is to uh, basically uh, uh, draw learning curves, uh, and uh, they, um, they, uh, they use actually uh, now the additive factor model actually to draw them. So here is actually what looks like a, a Q matrix, so the competency framework for the uh, uh, electrical engineering faculty at the University of Moncton. Um, so the, 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 black, the black square represents actually uh, one plus one and the uh, white square represents zero. So basically when you have a black square, it means actually uh, you have this uh, uh, skill which is evaluated in this course. For, uh, in terms of uh, competency framework evaluation, something like that is, uh, is, is quite of a nightmare. It's, it's very, very hard actually to, uh, to draw inferences on uh, all the skills because it's, it's simply not uh, identifiable. For instance, we have some uh, set of uh, competencies that are evaluated uh, always together. So there's not much actually that can be said uh, uh, for the individual uh, competencies in this uh, configuration. We also have other issues. We have some, some courses and, and all the, the two courses uh, I'm referring uh, to uh, here are project actually, Ev evaluating, uh, evaluating um, collaborative work. And uh, this is a kind of issue, for example, the, the Q matrix analyzer very quickly um, was able actually to identify it and, and to help actually correct. So what we obtain at the end are learning curves and uh, with the Q matrix analyzer, we have been able actually to uh, improve uh, the uh, um, goodness of fit of the uh, uh, predictive model. Pretty nice, uh, but 
It turns out that the curves that we obtained, uh, we were absolutely not sure about the reliability of, of any inference that could be made on that. And that, that's the biggest issue. Uh, that's, that's really actually a result interesting there, is that it doesn't mean that your uh, model is, is accurate, doesn't mean actually that the uh, parameters that you have fitted are meaningful. And, and so the, the uh, scientific uh, challenge that we're having are first the model identifiability, uh, which is uh, having actually a first uh, 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 Q-matrix uh, competency framework that, that, is, uh, um, that can be actually uh, evaluated and computed uh, uh, by, the, um, by the model correctly. And second one is uh, the uh, the reliability actually uh, on the parameters that are fitted and used actually to draw the learning curves. <clears throat> so what, what we achieved so far, we have been able actually to use uh, the model, uh, the additive factor model, the, the model of the uh, PSRC data shop outside of the uh, usual uh, environment, which is the intelligent uh, tutoring system. Uh, we have been able, actually, thanks to our tool, our production rules, to improve uh, the goodness of fit of the model with the modifications that we proposed. Uh, but in the meantime, we have learned a lot on thing and uh, about the limits, actually, of search uh, initiative folder represents. First thing is the quality of the curve is, is definitely a subject of caution, and it's, to be frank, it's something that uh, kept us uh, some, sometimes up at night. Uh, but uh, we manage actually uh, very recently, and it will be uh, it has been submitted uh, uh, today for EDM to uh, to calculate uh, standard errors and, and, and fitted parameters. Uh, the other thing is that we also discovered that improving AFM goodness of fit will not necessarily improve the competency framework quality. It two it's two things different. Uh, we can have actually a very, very, very good uh, uh, metrics, good RMAC, good whatsoever, but we can end up with, uh, um, with uh, a model behind that is uh, absolutely not stable. And, uh, and what we would like actually at the end is to automatize the process, but very quickly, uh, Regarding the uh, standard errors, uh, what we also discovered is that uh, if we try to, to infer stuff about, uh, let's say, a flat curve where there's no learning, it's not that obvious, actually, because uh, if you look uh, here, actually, uh, at, the, at the red curve, you can see that we can still have, actually, a, a, a very few learning when, at first, we will have uh, infer no learning. But we can also uh, be uh, confident in, in, in some certain situations, actually, that learning occurring. The only thing is that uh, it's not sure uh, at, at which pace, actually, uh, uh, it, it, it can occur. All right, so I think uh, I'm, I'm done. Kelly 4700, you're saying that the, the skills that are covered for the requirement of an electrical engineer, uh, it pretty much does everything. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, see, actually, what it was done is, uh, is uh, to uh, evaluate all the corroborative uh, uh, competencies in those uh, project courses. So uh, as they are not present anywhere else, it's not I, I didn't identifiable. There's nothing actually we can infer on that. Well, you could get rid of half your other courses. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for, 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 for many other, others, actually, the confirmation is, is uh, way more um, uh, easy, actually, to, to use. But for those ones.